Episode 6 of Learn Grand Anime 2, welcome back, and today we're going to build effects. Now effects are a really cool way of creating visual content in MA2, but the funny thing about effects is that it's actually a fairly simple to explain tool with a ton of uh, possibilities though. So this is sort of like the modular synthesizer of lighting design because it actually allows you to take these attributes up here and put a curve on it, sort of animating or fading between two values that you set. And first of all, let's get rid of the sequence window from last week. Also, by the way, if you're just joining me now on this series, you can go ahead and download last week's show file from the video description. And that will allow you to just follow along. So if you haven't done any of these tutorial videos yet, uh, just go ahead, download the show file, set it up. If you don't know how to do that, go back to episode number one and then uh, come back here. All right, so now we have our effects pool and we already saw two effects that I put in here. I encourage you to play around with these. And essentially what you see here are two parameters at play and that's color and the dimmer. So we have two different effect lines uh, going out to the fixtures from this effect. And this effect actually packs three different attributes. So uh, it's tilt that you see here, then the dimmer and this color effect. So one effect can really pack a lot of punch and that's that's like the cool thing about it. Before we get started, press off off to see if anything's running. We still have this one thing going, so just click on it, turn everything off so we have a clean slate to program off. And now the first thing you want to do is select the LED bars and for that we're just going to find them right here they are. Now one thing I have to warn you about up front, I'm only going to show you a really a scratch in the surface of what this tool can do. And I'm later going to point you to, to other really great resources to deepen your knowledge about effects. Today I'm just going to show you how you can use effects to get some basic looks out there that already look really cool. So with that, um, you have yet another tool in your toolbox to create shows with. All right, we got our LED bar selected and now we're going to create a new effect by right clicking on this tile right here. And here what we want to do is add an effect line. Again, one effect line max for every attribute that your selection of fixtures has to offer. So in this case, if we now add a dimmer effect line, unfortunately we cannot add a second effect line. We'll have to take a separate effect for that, but that's fine. So let's just take the dimmer because it's an easy to show example press confirm and now you don't see anything changing and that's because you have to close out this window, double click on this with your left mouse button and then you see the effect um, taking over. All right. And first of all, uh, you see here, these lines are associated with the attribute that they actually control and they feature a ton of options. And that's why this tool gets somewhat tricky, but uh, it's actually not that big of a deal. Um, I'm actually gonna switch to a different view and that's this edit effect line view, which gives us more of a visual overview and visual editor for these effect lines. And now let me just go from left to right and show you a few things that will help you to get up and running with this uh, effect generator. So first of all, you have the effect form. And what this is, is pretty much, you see one cycle over here. And talking about cycles, our cycles actually run at 60 instances per minute right now, right? That was a little complicated. With 60 BPM, it means that um, with 60 beats per minute, this gets cycled through. So right now we have 60 iterations of this going on in one minute. And now what Granime 2 will do is actually run through this effect line right here. And this upper part of this effect line represents this high value over here. And then this lower part represents this low value over here. So right now we can see that the MA2 effects engine is actually oscillating between 0% dimmer and 100% dimmer at um, this sine wave shape. So now we can change that to, for example, uh, let's take this chase. Now you can see it's a really small part of your fixtures 
and you don't really see it, but this is a curve going straight up, then over to the middle and then back down again. Let's go back to the side and show you how setting the low and the high value actually changes this. So if you were to set this to 50-50, then obviously you just have this fixed animation. You probably don't want to have that, so just set this as a at a nice comfortable range. Speed obviously is the speed of this whole animation. So if you go double, it goes faster. If you go double again, it goes even faster. Uh, and then width is also something really interesting that is actually really nicely visible over here. So if you go and set this to 10, let me just rewind this to 100. So now what you see is that this curve is only being executed on 10% of every cycle. And after that, it's the base value of this effect. In this case, it's 50. If we now go to bump, for example, you can see that in the beginning, the fixtures get turned on and then off again. And this happens in 10% of one cycle. And then afterwards, it stays at zero. So that's a really cool thing um, to use. If you set this down to one, for example, um, you can get some really cool effects. Let's try this with a different wave. Again, here's uh, the sign, different phase. And also you can see here, um, if we set this to 100 or let's say 50%, you can see here that the default mode of this curve is 100% and then it turns off the fixtures. So just keep that in mind when picking your forms right here. Also, one of the advanced features is that you can actually customize these forms. Um, more on that on two videos that I'm gonna link you to. Another really cool thing to use, by the way, is this pulse with modulation, um, because in this case, you can actually set, for example, an attack, and now you can see it fades in really nicely, but it has a steep drop off, but you can also set this to 100% um, decay, and now it's fading in and out. So like that, you can already nicely play around with everything. But that's only the beginning. Let's try to replicate the effect that we saw earlier. Let's just clear three times to turn this off. This effect right here, nope, let's take a look at this one. This effect right here combines multiple um, effect lines and I just want to show you how you can replicate that real quick. So in this case, we want to select our Sharpies, right click on an empty effect tile, you can maybe directly label it, call it Sharpies, and now add. We want to add a dimmer, and again, exit it, double click it to make it go off. Um, now we're going to right click on this one over here, and we're going to add a tilt uh, animation. Confirm. And now again, exit it, double click again to help take this new uh, effect line into our output. And now there are modes here, for example, and these are some of the advanced features. Uh, I encourage you to check out two videos actually that I'm gonna link in the video description below. One is by Cat West, which is a fairly old, but very, very extensive um, video on all the basics and all the features that effects um, give you. And also there's a video by Christian Jackson that contains quite a few really nice tricks. So let's just uh, go ahead and customize this tilt effect a little bit because right now they're just wiggling like that. Um, one of the things that most of the time you have to do with these sort of position um, things is just turn the rate way low. So relative to the other effect lines is actually just moving at 10% of the speed. And now what we wanna do is take our low and high values. You can see right now, um, they're not really there yet. What we had is sort of have the fixtures straight out and then wiggle around like that. So um, I don't know, let's take this up to zero. All right, so now it's not really doing anything. Let's go 90, all right, a little better already. Let's go 80 on this one. All right, and now we have something that sort of just straight out, shoots out into the crowd. Um, I actually quite like that. Let's turn this up to 120, so we have a little more of an effect. 
All right, let's take it down a notch, maybe 100. And that's sort of the beauty, but also the challenge when it comes to effects. Um, there's a lot of tweaking all these individual parameters because, um, you know, it, it takes a while for you to find a good combination. And that's actually something I've also been struggling quite a bit with effects. But at the end of the day, effects are really, really powerful uh, tools. So, you know, really dive deep into this and make sure that you understand it. All right, so now we already have a pretty nice thing going. Um, time to talk about face, by the way. So right here, we're back in the visual view, and it's really cool because you can actually toggle or select um, one or multiple of these um, effect lines right here to edit them. So now let's just turn this to zero. And now what you see is that even though the tilt is still doing this kind of thing, um, the dimmer is actually in one phase. And what happens right here is that uh, this phase from and to actually is sort of like a window across the effect line over here. So if you have that at the same value, all of your fixtures will always have the same output from the effects engine. But if you have a range of it, for example, zero through 180, then what happens is that they will actually be spread across half of this um, sort of cycle. And so like that, you also have uh, some fun options to play around with. Um, time to add the color, and then I'll show you a few more tricks that you can just play around with. And again, you need to experiment with those to kind of get really good at it. So let's take the color C1 right here. Again, exit and double click on it again. Now this is really wild. Right? I mean, this already looks really cool. We might be able to use that, but let's just clear out and take a second to uh, discover how we can actually find out good values. So I'm just going to take one of these fixtures and we already have the C1 selected over here. And what you wanna do is just uh, pick two colors at random, yellow, for example. And what you will see over here is 27.6. Uh, now that's the uh, fader actually in this case. So the fader for this color one thing, the parameter for this is at 27.6%. Now if we select something else, cyan, cyan, <laughs> we're at 34.3. And so if we go back in here, double click on that, oops, double click on that, uh, the low and the high value in this case refer to these numbers. So now when we, I can't remember what it was, I think 26 and 34. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> Jeez, oh, no, I'm all off, whoops. Come on, 26, please. I'm not sure what I just did to my keyboard. Nice. All right, 26 and 26, if we take this up a notch to 27, now we have two different colors. All right, and so like that, you already have a really cool effect. Uh, last thing we want to do is just go assign and then just put this on an executor. So now we can toggle it on and off. And what's really cool is that while we have this running in an executor, if we go ahead and edit this, then we can actually see the changes. So let's just I don't know, put this to 34. And now we have this crazy color mix going on again. Back down to 28, you can see the changes taking effect immediately. All right, one last thing before I let you go. Um, this part right down here is actually also a lot of fun to mess around with. So let's go ahead and go to our dimmer section. Uh, now the first thing you can do is, um, for example, set the, the direction so you can make this bounce back and forth. By the way, you could totally go ahead and select a different effect shape for this individual effect line. So that's totally possible. And in general, this behavior lets you really layer many looks on top of each other in just one effect. Also, one thing that's really cool to use is this section down here. And that's a little hard to explain. So just go ahead and play around with it. What I can tell you about these is that it just has different effects on how um, the effect output gets applied to the fixtures. It's sort of hard to explain. Uh, look it up in the menu, 
uh, in the manual if you like. But in general, you can just experiment around with it. Ooh, that's a really nice look. Let's select some wings. All right, so just play around with it and also make sure to watch the Christian Jackson video that I pointed out in the video description. He has also a really cool trick when it comes to pan and tilt effects and then um, applying this wing shape to it. But that's pretty much effects. There's so much to talk about in this, um, in this about this tool in general that I'm actually going to do an advanced tutorial on it at, at one point in time. Um, Especially when it comes to pan and tilt, there's so much to talk about because with uh, a few tricks that Christian also shows you in his videos, you can actually create a situation where you can control the size of this animation. But then also what you can do with effects is actually take the, the pan and tilt positioning that's there already um, somehow that you have, for example, in a sequence and then have an effect sort of just go around that existing position, and that's a relative effect. And what you can also do is actually create generic effects that you just kind of prepare up front and then just apply to different selections of fixtures. And that, in turn, can be stored as a separate effect then. Um, these are called template effects, and they're also covered in Christian's video, but also in Kat's video. So make sure to check these out as like further reading and learning material for you. Um, I just hope I could give you a glimpse into how to use these effects just really roughly. Um, just keep in mind you have all of these lines and they are a small waveform oscillating between two values that you set and then like that you have your small modular lighting synthesizer. So I'm hoping that this video was able to give you a primer on that. Again, more material in the future or um, if you want to be a real good student, which I encourage you to be, then go ahead and watch the two videos that I linked down below. Uh, just find some effects tutorials on YouTube and uh, dig deeper into it. And with that, we're at the end of this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you like this video, give it a like, subscribe to my channel, and uh, make sure to be back next Wednesday because every Wednesday I'm releasing a new episode. If you get stuck along the way, make sure to go down in the video description, find the link to join the Facebook group. We'd love to have you there. And uh, it's a really safe place for you to ask questions that might even seem dumb to you. Don't worry, I asked a ton of dumb questions in my life, I think. So with that being said, see you next week. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.